This is uh, Dr. Jen. I'm excited to share another fun recipe with you. It's another one-pot meal. Um, it's actually a really good one for the fall and winter. It's a nice warm stew, hearty, also plant-based. You know, I love plant-based cooking because it is so much more nutrient-dense. It's really so good for you, and I really feel like food not only should nourish you, you should enjoy it, but it also should be good for you. A lot of times what you eat can be the difference in you feeling great and being healthy um, or actually causing disease. So I love to find fun plant-based recipes that also taste really, really good because that's the most important thing. So today I'm gonna make a butternut squash lentil stew. Butternut squash is in season. I actually got this one at the local farmer's market. Um, it also has some carrots, which I also got at the farmer's market, um, onions and garlic, the butternut squash, some vegetable broth, some, um, I have diced tomatoes here, but you could also use um, a whole tomato. I actually like to eat my tomatoes whole <laughs> instead of uh, putting them in stews, but a tomato, if you have tomatoes available, just you can use those instead of the diced tomatoes. And then some fun spices, so of garam masala. If you don't have garam masala, you can actually use cumin combined with allspice, and that will give you kind of similar flavors. But garam masala is a nice spice to have around. It's really good with vegetable dishes. I really like that flavor. And then a little turmeric, and then salt and pepper to taste. I also have some spinach, which I'm gonna add at the end. So the first step is I am going to chop my veggies. The, um, I'll do my onions first so that they can um, saute. Again, I have my dull knife with me. Next time I'll make sure I have a sharper knife. <laughs> so just peel my onions and then um, get started. I love butternut squash. Again, it's really versatile. You can do so many different things with it. Um, so flavorful and readily available this time of year. So it's a really good thing to um, use. It um, is also good. I like shopping at the farmer's market or shopping local because you know when you buy vegetables that have traveled far, unfortunately, they are not picked at the ripe their peak ripeness, I should say, and they have to, you know, travel a long distance, which is not ideal for us, um, not ideal for the vegetable either, and again, doesn't um, really, you know, result in peak flavor and um, nutrition. You know, when you pick things that are fresh, then the nutrients are really, readily available, they taste better, and like I said, they're better for you. So um, it's always, and we have so many wonderful farms, um, local farms that are available here in the area. It's great to just take advantage of everything that's, that's here. So you can get that great taste, and um, also the peak of you know, ripeness and um, nutritiousness, I guess. Nutritiousness. <laughs> Nutrition. So I'm just gonna chop this, dice it into a fine dice here. Get my celery out of the way in the meantime. So good size. I'm gonna add them to my pot here. Um, as I mentioned before, I like to just saute in water. You don't really need the added oil um, for flavor or anything. The flavor again comes from these nice um, fresh veggies. I'm just gonna add a little water to that pot so it can saute. Just really enough to cover um, the bottom of the pot so that it doesn't burn or stick. And put that to saute while I chop the rest. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna put two, maybe three garlic cloves. This one is a good size, so maybe I only need 
to, actually, yeah, I have two good sized garlic cloves here, so I'll just use those. So two to three cloves of garlic is good. I usually just go, you know, it depends on the size of the bulb and the cloves. So since these are nice big ones, I'll just use the two. Although I always feel like there's never too much garlic. You know, garlic also is really good for you, the fresh garlic. If you don't have fresh garlic, it's fine though. You can also use the dried, um, about a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half of dry would be sufficient. But the fresh garlic, again, is, is um, also good for you. Has anti-inflammatory properties. So not only does it taste good, but like I said, it's really good for you. So the garlic and onions together are a really good, um, healthy combination in addition to adding some great flavor to your dish. Oh. This dish also calls for a little fresh ginger, which I'm going to get in a second. So um, fresh ginger is also great. This is a nice young ginger. The great thing about, I got this also from the farmer's market. Um, the great thing about the young ginger is it doesn't have the skin, so you can just use it as it is. So about an inch of ginger, usually when you're talking about fresh ginger, you do it by the the length, I guess, so about an inch. So I'm gonna save these pieces for later. I like to use ginger in all kinds of dishes. It's gonna give it a little rinse. I also use it a lot in salad dressings and things. I like to make my own salad dressing because um, I can control the ingredients. So instead of, you know, all of the preservatives and oil and sugar and things like that that are in the commercial the prepared um, dressings. If you make your own, you really can control all that. And you can make um, with whatever you have on hand. I like just putting a little um, vinegar or lemon juice or lime juice, garlic, one of my favorite ingredients if you haven't noticed, and, um, and then season it however I like. So whatever I'm in the mood for. So I, sometimes I like to make a peanut ginger dressing, which is really good. So. My fresh ginger is diced nice here. So once my um, onions are done, I will add the, oops, I missed a piece. The, when the onions are nice and soft, I should say, I will add the ginger and garlic because they don't need as long to soften. Just give that a little stir. ginger and garlic in the bowl so it's I can put it aside for when I'm ready to go so now I'm gonna chop my um, carrots I'm just they're small carrots so I'm just gonna dice um, slice them into little rounds they will be nice and soft in the um, cook well in the stew so I don't need to make them too small. If they were bigger, I might cut them into quarters, you know, a, like a finer dice. But this small size, that's a good size, to, a nice bite-sized piece. So I'm going to use these two little carrots, and then I'm going to chop my celery, and then we should be ready to go. So the butternut squash sometimes is challenging to dice. Um, I actually cheated a little here and I got some pre-diced um, butternut squash for this occasion. But um, you can um, do like a quick um, heat, like gentle um, roast. And then uh, cut it after that, but first you you know you have to peel it and then you can toss it into roast for a few minutes. Oops, I lost my little carrot over there. Okay. 
I'm going to chop my celery into a nice dice as well. I'm just going to cut these in half so they're a little bit smaller. There we go. See how my onions are doing? They look like they're getting pretty soft there, so I'm almost ready to add the my garlic and ginger. I'm going to give it a few more seconds. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. It doesn't really need to be that high. So, Open my can of tomatoes. When you're choosing vegetable broth, um, if you don't have your own, always go for the low sodium. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of times there's, there's too much added sodium in a lot of the preserved things that we, um, or packaged things that we use. So I always look for the low sodium vegetable broth, um, lower no sodium. And always looking at the ingredients when I shop to make sure that it really is just, doesn't have any added extras. Sometimes you'll see, if it, even though it's vegetable broth, sometimes they will have milk added or sugar added or something like this. So this basically just has water, carrots, celery, onions, leeks, tomato puree garlic, spices, so pretty basic. You want to make sure that, again, you're always buying, getting what you intend and no extra. So now I'm going to add my garlic and ginger. Let me stir that in here a little bit. And then I'm also going to add my, um, my spices at this time. It's good to add while it's heating so that it just kind of wakes up the spices before you add the rest of the ingredients. So it's really a tablespoon, a teaspoon, sorry, of garam masala I'm going to add and about a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric. So get my measuring spoon if it will fit in there. Of course not. So, so it's a half a teaspoon. So I'm going to just do two halves to do that. That's the garam masala. Again, if you don't have garam masala, it's okay to use cumin um, plus a little allspice or whatever, a little bit of cinnamon if that's what you have on hand. That works well. Um, and then I'm just going to add a little a quarter of a teaspoon of the turmeric. So just for a little of that extra flavor. I'm going to stir that up and let those flavors. Ooh, smells really good. Let that wake up a little bit. Got a little yellow from the turmeric. So I just give that a few more seconds there. Let that flavor awake a little bit. And then I will be ready to add the rest of the ingredients. So I have my carrot, celery, and my, <laughs> my butternut squash cheat <laughs> instead of cutting the butternut squash. So it's about um, three cups of butternut squash that goes in the recipe. So a medium sized butternut squash. So about this size would be good. And I think those flavors smell good now. So I'm going to add these. Let these cook a little bit um, before I add um, the other ingredients. So just let that soften a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of broth now. 
So the recipe calls for about four cups of broth. So I'll add a little bit to get started here, just so that um, it doesn't um, stick to the bottom. So just enough really to cover the bottom. And like I said, I always like to use broth or water to saute in. It's not really necessary to add the oil. If you, if you are sauteing, um, you don't need the added oil. Um, the flavor, again, comes from the veggies that you're using. So I will just give that a few more seconds to heat up. And I love having all the different um, veggies year-round to try, so it's always fun. I love going to the farmer's market to find what they have available and what's fresh. Like I said, it's always great to have the things that are most in season um, because they're picked fresh, they are um, more nutritious, they, the vitamins and minerals are still, haven't left a lot of times if things are on the shelf for a really long time, they don't have as many vitamins and minerals, but um, they still do, you know, veggies are still very nutrient dense, but the benefit of going to the farmer's market is just getting that fresh picked. A lot of times it's much more flavorful as well. So it's fun to see what they have. And often I plan my meals by deciding what's available. And then, so I'll go to the market, see what they have. So like this week, they had the butternut squash and um, the, the fresh carrots and also mushrooms, which I used. And then I decide what meals I'm gonna make. It's always fun to, um, if you're cooking, for me, I always recommend that people make their meal around the vegetables. So even if you are gonna prepare a meat, instead of making the meal built around the meat, prepare it around the vegetables. And then that just kind of changes your perspective and you make sure that you're eating more vegetables, which is um, always better for you. So now, this is kind of high. Turn the stove down to low. Got a little high there. <laughs> so I am going to give my little, my lentils a rinse. Whenever you use lentils, so the recipe calls for about a cup of lentils, which I have here. Um, you always wanna check to make sure that there aren't stones in, anytime you get fresh beans or whole beans, um, to make sure there's no stones in the, because when they pick, sometimes there are, there are stones, little stones or pebbles that get left behind. And then you wanna just give them a rinse just to make sure that they are, um, clean and again that you get those stones out. I'll give those a few more seconds. Okay, looks like my veggies are a little bit softer now. So, so now I'm going to add my butternut squash. I'm going to add all the other ingredients in here. So the butternut squash, oops, there you go. I'm going to add my lentils. my freshly rinsed lentils. <laughs> then I'm gonna add the tomatoes. And then I'm gonna add the rest of the vegetable broth. And then I'm just gonna stir everything up nice so that all those good flavors get mixed throughout. So that's again is about four cups of vegetable broth. Give it a little stir. I'm gonna let it sit to simmer for, it should take about, usually about 20 minutes. Lentils are great because they cook really quickly, um, 15, 20 minutes tops. And by that time also the butternut squash should be nice and soft so we can check back then. So it smells really yummy. I think that it is done. And the, the butternut squash seems like it's softer, ready. So let's bring it over here so you can take a look. Mm. I'm gonna get a spoon so I can dig in and try a little. Um, I did not add any salt. Um, the, the recipe, you know, you could add a little bit of salt if you like it, but there's so many other flavors are getting in there again. It's, it's probably not really necessary. So let's, I'm gonna get a little spoon so I can, oh actually, I'm here. Let's see. I'm gonna 
take a little, some of the butternut squash too, see how we are. Ah, hot, steamy. Give it a second. Mm, smells good. <laughs> okay, let's see. Mm. That was really good. 20 minutes or less. All done. Nice steaming. I would add a little, you can add a little bit of salt if you like. There you go. So that's butternut squash lentil stew. I will um, we'll post the link of the recipe if you want to try it yourself at home. Hope you can join me next time.